Hi, this is Shadi and today we're discussing another historical figure from the early days of the Kodokan, someone that was considered a child prodigy and also considered a genius by Kano Sensei himself. Uh, it is Hideichi Nagaoka, uh, one of the last to be promoted to 10th Dan before uh, Jigoro Kano passed away and uh, funny enough he looks a bit like Jigoro Kano and here you see him doing a demonstration uh, in New York City in 1934 using a mix of Atami Waza and Nage Waza. I will be covering Nage Waza and also wrist locks of Judo very soon. So uh, Hideichi Nagaoka was someone that was raised and learned uh, Kitoriyu Jujutsu as a child. He was born on September 17th, 1876 in the city of Okayama and passed away on November 22nd, 1952 at the age of 77. So uh, as I mentioned, he is one of the last to be promoted by Kano Shihan to 10th Dan. He only promoted three. Um, his Sometimes if you look for him on Google, you might find Shuichi Nagaoka or Hidekazu, but that's a mispronunciation. His name is Hideichi Nagaoka. So, uh, in the history of all Kodokan, only two men were considered geniuses, Shiro Saigo and Shuichi Nagaoka. And uh, in his youth, he started training Kitoriyu Jujutsu uh, under Kensaburo Noda. And he was very famous, being strong, always winning, and had very good physical qualities. And eventually was promoted to what is now called Shihan at the age of 16 only. Um, that really made him confident and also going and accepting challenges. So one day a Kodokan judoka named Chichi Goro Baba, who was a second dan, passed by his dojo and challenged him to a randori. But uh, Baba's technical superiority just demolished Nagaoka. Uh, he barely did anything. He was like a complete beginner against Baba. And that really left a bitter taste in his mouth. So much so that he left his hometown, Okayama, to go to Tokyo to join the Kodokan. And he joined the Kodokan in 1893. So he was very short. And uh, he took a lot of the uh, jujitsu the old uh, jujitsu habits with him to the Kodokan that it really caused a lot of troubles at first in the randori sessions like uh, the jigotai stance where you are very low almost like a sumo stance the jigotai you can see it in uh, nage no kata when they are doing sutemiwaza and uh, after that he stopped training he would just observe them doing randori uh, discovering the gripping, discovering the stance, etc. And then he eventually adopted Sutemiwaza in Shizentai. Um, he, he became so much so known for Sutemi that they would say the technique is Sutemi, uh, the man is Nagaoka. So he would help young teachers to become good and he would be of assistant to the president of the Kodokan. Um, so if you remember around the turn of the century, Hajime Isogai left for Kyoto because uh, Kano, uh, Jigoro Kano ordered him to go in order to have another branch other than the Tokyo branch. So the next city was the second biggest city in Japan, Kyoto. Uh, six years after that uh, had passed and Nagaoka became the number one in the Kodokan in Tokyo at least. That was before the rise of Mifune and all these others. So uh, Nagaoka time to improve was very short uh, in six years for example Isogai went from second to third dan at the age of 27 but Nagaoka went uh, became a fourth dan at the age of 22 only so um, at the annual Kagami Biraki ceremony in 1899 uh, which had like traditional activities of the Kodokan and uh, there they would do like Mohan Randori or exemplary uh, randori it was be between sakujiro yokoyama or the D oni yokoyama the demon who was six dan at the time and 37 years of age against a fourth dan 22 years of age nagaoka and uh, that there was also kata demonstration but the randori would be performed uh, very tough almost like a pure combat so uh, this randori was requested actually by Nagaoka himself and Kano happily accepted. So uh, 
they had the Randori, Yokoyama and Nagaoka and back then Yokoyama was like the uh, big boss of the Kodokan, kind of like the uh, unpronounced leader because first of all he was older and two uh, he had such a strong personality and he was very physically strong so uh, but Nagaoka was the young uprising star of the Kodokan back then so the fight began and there was a lot of tension because both of them everyone knew who both of these guys were and Nagaoka finally took him down with a Yoko Sutemi Waza so um, the match um, that was the only match that Yokoyama ever lost in his entire life and on that night Nagaoka became fifth dan um, and Isogai became fourth dan so um, in my opinion when you see stuff like this uh, when they go and do like free rendori red versus uh, white here he fought one of the biggest and uh, beat him and he was immediately promoted in my opinion um, by today's standards i know now the sport is far more bigger uh, you know prerequisites exams uh, championships competition points etc i know that but in my opinion there should be two ways to be promoted either where you show your competitive uh, accuracy and excellency as Nagaoka did and also you have people who are more into the academic where they do their exams their kata uh, they write their thesis etc so for example they should have like a standard for championships in order to be promoted like uh, for example if you become world champion you would be immediately fifth down in my opinion um, Olympic champion and world champion immediately, you know, red and white belt, uh, you know, so on. And so if Olympic champion only, you know, I'm, I think you get the idea, but I think there should be a more uh, competitive uh, way of getting promoted where you, because it's a martial art in the end. And also the academic part, you know, not everyone is competitive. Uh, a lot of us do this because, you know, we enjoy doing randori between friends uh, and you know maybe compete rarely maybe once a year but uh, someone that's really a competitive and high level uh, they defend their national title every year in my opinion every time you defend your national title should be promoted second third down you know a, a rank uh, further in my opinion that's how it should be so uh, moving on so in order to promote uh, judo kano sent judokas to other areas like osaka and kyoto um, he moved to kobe in 1902 uh, he taught at the hyogo prefecture police college and in 1903 he taught at the dai nippon sede butokukai um, in kyoto and in 1912 he taught at the gako wujutsu senmon um, and he also assisted uh, Isogai in promoting the uh, judo in the Kenzai region so that tells me one thing that he was also very um, talented in Neiwaza as well because he was assisting people like Isogai and also uh, in 1899 at the height of the competition against the Fusen Ryu against Mataemon Tanabe in specific if you don't remember the uh, trilogy that happened between Isogai and uh, Tanabe happened from 1899 till 1900 uh, in the span of this year and in 19 1899 uh, Nagaoka actually went uh, against uh, Tanabe uh, so at the height of this uh, rivalry so to speak and uh, Tanabe was not able to tap him out he even got him in a juji gatame and was able to escape and resist and defend the match ended in a draw he was more so on the defensive side but uh, nonetheless, uh, the man that tapped out the multiple Kodokan Judokas uh, could not tap out Nagaoka, which tells me that he was talented on the ground as well. So, um, in May of 1913, he returned to, to, to uh, Tokyo, the Kodokan branch. Uh, Kano himself asked him to serve as coach for the Kodokan, and uh, there he took the technical direction of the Kodokan, and he also taught uh, at the Tokyo Advanced Teacher Training School and served as a judo instructor for the uh, Tokyo Police. So, uh, and also Koto Shihan College and Chuo University. And uh, in May of 1934, he, uh, in a martial arts tournament where he was 
far older. Uh, Nagaoka, who was back then ninth dan at the age of 59, competed against um, Hajime Isogai, who was also ninth dan but 64 years old, five years older. Uh, it was, in, I believe, in front of the emperor. Um, and the match was refereed by Yoshitsugu Yamashita himself and the result was a draw but it was one of the uh, most exciting judo matches the emperor has ever seen and uh, finally Hideichi Nagaoka passed away on no November 22nd 1952 at the age of 77 after a very long life of uh, being a teacher, a competitor, proving himself to be one of the best not only a child prodigy but also as an adult uh, competing up until the uh, remainder of his years at the age of 59 years old so uh, if you have anything else to add let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i already have a few uploads uh, just for the patrons only just to show my appreciation so if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening <laughs>